Hi, this is a Fourscore tutorial on the bookmarks feature. Bookmarks in Fourscore come in handy for a variety of purposes. The most obvious one is to mark specific pages in your score so that you can easily navigate to them later. But since bookmarks are able to mark not just individual pages but also a range of pages, you can also use them for situations like if you have a multi-movement work, you can split it up into its individual movements, or if you have a PDF file of an entire songbook, you can use bookmarks to split that up into individual songs. Now once you've created bookmarks in a score, you can work with them in similar ways that you would work with an individual PDF score file. So for example, you can, you can link audio files to the bookmark, or you can add the bookmark to a set list and then export and share the set list containing a bookmark, and I'll show some examples of that later. But for now, let's get started with bookmarks. So here I have an example of a multi-movement score. And to access the bookmark tool, you'll bring up the menu bar and then tap on this book icon in the top left. Now, as you can see, I've already created some bookmarks for this score. So I'll try creating a new one. And the way I'll do that is tapping the plus sign on the top left corner. Let's just call it uh, my new bookmark. And then here to the right, you can enter a range of pages. So let's say, for example, that I just wanted to mark one particular page. Then I would enter the same page number in both of those fields. But if I wanted to have a range of pages, then I could enter another number in the second field. And notice here at the bottom that there's a preview of the score so that you can look at the pages to help you figure out the page range. And you can just page through that the same way that you would page through a regular score. So you can either swipe right to left to advance, left to right to go backwards, or you can tap directly on these arrow buttons on the right and left. So let's go ahead and save that bookmark and you'll see that it now shows up in my list of bookmarks and if I tap on it that will take me directly to the page that is at the beginning of my bookmark. Now let's take a little closer look at this bookmarks window and the different features that it has. So at the top there's a bar of buttons and um, they list the bookmarks in different ways. So right now it's on page and that just lists the, the bookmarks in my score in the order of page number. And if I go to title, that would list the bookmarks in alphabetical order according to the title. So that this might be a useful view, for example, if you're looking at a songbook that has a lot of different songs um, as opposed to a uh, multi-movement work where the movements are in particular order, you might want to look at an alphabetized list of the songs. And then there is TOC for Table of Contents. And what this would give you a view of is if you have a PDF file that already has a table of contents in the PDF format, you would be able to view the table of con contents here. Now, this particular file doesn't have that, so there's nothing listed here. But if you wanted to use the PDF format table of con contents, then you could tap this import button on the top left. And then it gives you this option to search the PDF file for the table of comp contents and then import that as bookmarks. And then um, up here on the top right, there's also an edit button. And that allows you to uh, select and delete bookmarks, reset just clears all of your selections, and then this import button here is basically the same thing as the PDF table of contents import. Now notice that my bookmarks also have these um, gray arrow icons over here on the right, and those let me edit some of the properties of the bookmarks that look a lot like what you would see for editing the metadata properties on a regular PDF score file. So here you can make edits to the title of the bookmark, the page range. You could change the composer. And again, that might be useful if you're 
using this for a songbook that has lots of songs by lots of different composers and you can change some of the other properties here. Um, notice that this uh, middle section has that says no song assigned is where you can go to if you tap on the arrow next to it that's how you can link an audio file to this particular bookmark and that's really handy for these multi-movement works where you might have a reference recording where you have a particular track for a particular movement and then you can assign those to each other and then again here at the bottom you have this preview window where you can just um, page through the score and that helps you when you're changing the page numbers for the bookmark and uh, notice also that at the very bottom of this window you have a couple of interesting options this action button on the bottom left lets you send the bookmark by uh, Bluetooth or print it out and also um, this open in button lets you uh, send it to other apps on your iPad that can read PDF files and you have a couple of options of just getting the bare bones PDF without any annotations or include the annotations so they're just generating the annotated version of the PDF and then it gives gives me some options about where to send that to. So that's a convenient way to export the range of pages that's in your bookmark. So going back to that, um, on the bottom right you have the email icon and that kind of does the same thing. It allows you to email the range of pages that's in your in your bookmark and you have uh, a number of options that you can use either with or without the annotations. So now let's have a look at some of the other menus in Fourscore so that you can see where bookmarks appear in them. So let's have a look at the music library menu and what you'll find is that bookmarks will appear in the same locations and listings that you see that same regular score that the bookmarks came from in. So for example if I go in my composer list here I can see the full score down here at the bottom and also this list now includes all of the bookmarks that I created in that score and including my new bookmark here almost at the bottom. And then you can um, differentiate between bookmarks and uh, standalone PDF files by looking at this arrow icon on the right of each item listed and the dark gray ones are bookmarks, the light gray ones are PDF files and then again um, you can use those arrow icons and tap on them to be able to change some of the properties of the bookmark. And then if we take a look at the set list listing and let's pick a set list here I can go to add scores and um, go to the composer and then I see here that I can also add bookmarks to a set list in addition to regular uh, individual PDF files so I'll go ahead and add my new bookmark and so now that bookmark is part of the set list, I can um, share and export and share that set list and the bookmark contents will go out with that. Now on my YouTube channel, there are a couple of other tutorials about working with set lists and set list sharing, but there is one point from those that I wanted to bring up now, which is that if you share a set list that contains a bookmark, the recipient will only get the range of pages that is in the bookmark. They won't get the entire PDF score. So that's just something to be aware of if you are working with set lists and bookmarks in that way. So let's take a look at the search window. And as you can see, the bookmarks are showing up in my search window in addition to the regular PDF files, and I can search for them just as I would with regular files and there is a setting that is related to the display of bookmarks in the music library menu and the search window 
And that setting is here under the metadata section near the bottom, and it's called Score Menu Includes Bookmarks. And um, basically, if you want the bookmarks to appear in your music score library uh, menu or the search window, you'll want to have this set to on. If you would, would rather not include bookmarks in those menus, you can turn it off, and then you'll only see individual PDF files in those two menus. So one other cool trick for navigating with bookmarks is that you can use the seek bar down at the bottom of the score. And if you slide it around, it will show you where you're at with regard to the bookmarks. And sometimes if there are multiple bookmarks covering the same range, you will see that noted in the seek bar. So finally, if you need to get more details about bookmarks, there is a section in the Fourscore manual about that. You can find that under um, the More section here under Learn. And then, appropriately enough, it is listed as a bookmark uh, right here on page 7. And that's it for the, tu the tutorial. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out my YouTube channel for more Fourscore tutorials and tutorials on other music and technology topics.